seen before and a day we'll never see again as always we believe it is a day to praise the lord let's get a lord a hand clap of praise glory hallelujah thank you lord jesus it's just so good to be back with you this morning um sister sandra i don't know can you check on your facebook and see if it is live on my page or is it live on the um, uh, Mark Astoria page? So just look at Mark McCoy. If it is, just share it, share it, whatever it is on, on back to Mark McCoy. Hallelujah this morning. We are in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, we came in town for the marriage of, of my nephew and uh, Marlon Ford and him and his new wife, Vicky. Oh, hallelujah. You did. We have such a wonderful time at the wedding, and um, ooh, we partied at the reception, y'all. I didn't dance like David danced at that reception. <laughs> so the wife is laughing at me because she know I got stuff on me. Just going, ooh, what you doing, old man? <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We glorify you, we magnify you, and we lift you up. You're so worthy, God, of all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before, and a day we'll never see again. Lord, we give you praise. And we give you glory. Now, have your way this day, this morning, dear Heavenly Father, anoint afresh. We plead your blood over everyone that's listening to this message right now on Facebook and on uh, 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 the conference call. And then we praise your holy name. Hallelujah. For those that's going to be listening to this recording later, Lord, we thank you. We plead the blood over their lives, over their families, over their finances, over their communities. We plead your blood, dear Lord, over everything surrounding your people, your children, God. We lift you up. Now we ask you, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer who lives. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, Sister Sandra, how, how are we looking over there? All right, all right. What what I want to do for a minute? What I want to do for a minute? Uh, I want to just 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 sing a song for myself. Just as we get ready to start this lesson, it it, it is it live as Pastor Mark or Pastor Mark McCoy or Mark McCoy. Okay, share it on Mark McCoy's page. That, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I started the Facebook a little different this morning, not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> Sometimes we do those kind of things. I'm gonna see if I can do it on mine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give me a second, everybody. Y'all, I, I tried something new this morning and didn't know what I was doing. And you know, we have times where we do that. Uh, but this lesson, as, as I'm getting myself together, the lesson is going to come from Exodus. It's going to come from Exodus this morning and also from Corinthians. And so um, turn with me to Exodus, Exodus chapter 35, Exodus chapter 35. Um, and we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 35, uh, starting at the... Um, uh, 20th verse, Exodus 35, starting at the 20th verse. 
And I just ask you to turn now to Exodus chapter 25, starting at 35, starting at verse 20, and we're going to read down to 29. Um, I'm reading from a New International Version, and it reads as follows. Um, then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and who hard moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meetings, for all its service, and for the sacrifice of sacred garments, and all who were willing men and women alike came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, and rings, and ornaments. They, they all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, or ram skins, dyed red, or the other durable leathers brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver and or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord. And everyone who had Arcadia wood for, for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, purple, blue, and scarlet yarn of fine linen. And all the women, all the women who were willing had, and had the skills spun the goat's hair. The, the leaders, the leaders brought honest stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephraim of the breastplate. They also brought spices and olive oil for, for the light and, and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. And all the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offering for all the work the, the Lord through Moses had commanded him. Amen. Now that's that that was Exodus chapter 35, verses 20 through 29. Now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 in the New Testament. We're going to look at verses 6 through 8, and, and it reads, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctant or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So today's lesson, as you can tell, today's lesson is dealing with giving. And, and the title of today's lesson is willing giving, willing giving. Oh, hallelujah. And our key verse is verse uh, six of Second Corinthians chapter nine. But this I say, he shall sow sparingly, shall reap also sparingly, and he shall, which shows bountifully, shall also reap bountifully. Our key concept for today's lesson is God wants us to give from a generous heart. The keys to this message is number one, God is happy when we are willing when we willingly give back to him. Number two, we have some some things that we can, we can give to the Lord. And three, God owns everything and will give us what we need. Oh hallelujah. And then when we get down into the deep part of the lesson, we're going to talk about uh, the learn the, the lesson uh, aims and today's facts that we're going to deal with. Here's the learning facts. To recall how the Israelites demonstrated generosity in funding the tabernacle construction. The biblical principle that we want to get out of this lesson is to compare and to contrast Old and New Testament texts with, regarding, with regards to giving. 
And then our daily application, our daily application for this lesson is we want to identify at least one way to better express generosity and giving and make a plan to do so. When we look at our outline this, this morning, our outline this morning, we're going to be looking at it from the standpoint of, of, of number one, be an inspired giver. And that's going to come from Exodus chapter 35, verse 5, which is outside of a text, but I still want to bring it up. And then we're going to look at be a willing giver. And that's going to be Exodus chapter 35, verses 20 through 29. And then we're going to be talk about being a cheerful giver. Being a cheerful giver. Oh, hallelujah. This is this is going to be such an awesome lesson on giving. I'm just so excited about it because oftentimes when we start talking about giving, most people just want to run away. They don't want to hear about giving because all they think and all they say in the world is all that preacher want is your money. That's all that preacher want is your money. I'm not here asking you for any money. I'm just telling you the principles of giving because this this text says, he, you know, it says plain and clear to us, God says, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and he who shows, sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. God, God did, did, did not play with us. He told us just what the deal was is that if you give, it's going to be given back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. The whole thing is, is where is your heart in your giving? Your heart is what's important to your giving. It, it's not what's in your pocket. It, it, it's not what's in your hands. It's not what's in your bank account. But what is important is that you give with the right kind of heart. And so my job this morning is to inspire you to become a giver, a willing giver, a giver that 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 gives cheerfully. And I'm going to give my testimony. I don't I, I I I don't I don't hold that back when it comes to giving because I want people to understand that you are not giving a preacher, a church, anything. You're supposed to be giving unto God. And when you understand that you're giving on to God and not to man, then you your attitude should change. Your 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 mindset should change. Your 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 your, your you, you should be happy to give to God. God don't need what you got because God owns a, the cattle on a thousand hills, and the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He don't need what you got. He just want to put you in a position that that when you give. He'll be able to give back to you. Like I said, press down, shaking together and running over. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that heart of giving. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So this lesson background, this lesson background, uh, uh, we, 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 we got to go all the way back to, to the Old Testament. And we're dealing with, with, with Moses. We're dealing with Moses and the children of Israel back in the Old Testament. They 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 were they, they, they were blessed. They, they they got an exodus from Egypt and they received the law on Mount Sinai that 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 marked the beginning of the nation of Israel. We we should remember that Abraham's descendants had lived in Egypt for many generations, and over time they had become quite familiar with the religious views of the Egyptian overlords. But perhaps for for this reason, the first two of the Ten Commandments stress that God's people were not to worship like the Egyptians, who believed in many different gods. The Israelites were to serve no other God than the only true and living God and were not permitted to make any idols or other physical representation of his creation. That's from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. You can go read that on your own time. And then to further assist in this, this uh, what we call religious reintroduction of the people, God commanded Moses 
to construct a sanctuary and a national center of worship. And, 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 and so that the, 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 the sanctuary that, that he told them to, to construct was, was very large. It was se a semi-portable tent. And, 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 and they called it the tabernacle. God asked the people to provide material for this tabernacle. God could have did it miraculously. He could have gave them everything they needed. But God was trying instead to get every man to be a giver, a willing giver, and to give with his heart. And that challenge takes us to that result. We'll talk about it. But I want to stop here parenthetically. When the Israelites came out of Israel, I mean, came out of Egypt, they had to change their whole mentality. They had a slave mentality, even though they were the chosen people of God. They had came in as, uh, into either uh, as chosen people, blessed people, but something happened and they became slaves. Now God is releasing them out of slavery. And he wanted to change their mentality. I'm talking to somebody right now. Many people, especially those of us in the African-American community, we have what I call a slave mentality. Uh, another word for it in our society, since we so we're a hundred and so years from slavery, is a poverty mentality. And a poverty mentality and a slave mentality is is tied right together. The, those mentalities say that 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 somebody else, the master, got to take care of me. Somebody else, the government, got to take care of me. They ought to take care of me. I. I I, my family done did everything and you got to take care of me. No, 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 no. You go around, that's a victim mentality. You need to know that 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 you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to understand that, that you're the head and not the tail. You need to understand that God has called you his people, his chosen people, his chosen generation, and you're a raw priesthood, a holy nation. He said, where are you going, preacher? It's by the grace of God. And, and, and what we have to do is change our gimme, 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 gimme attitude to a I'm willing to give. And when you change your mindset about giving, your whole life will change. Oh, oh let, me, let me break this down. Let me break this down. He said, but, but Pastor, I don't, I don't have any money. It's okay. This woman just had two mites, and Jesus said, "We're gonna make a memorial to her because she gave all she had." Oh, but 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 but, but, but I didn't, I didn't work so hard for this. I got all this stuff now. I, I don't, I, I, I swear, I don't have a poverty mentality. I got a prosperity mentality. I got everything I need. And God can bless me. Okay. But you still don't want to give. You sound like the rich young ruler. And that rich young ruler did not give. And he walked away sad. Well, you say, all right, Pastor. Okay, I gotta give money. I got I gotta give. Well, no, I don't I don't want your money. I want your heart. And I want you to have a heart to give. Not just give of your treasure but give of your time and your talent. Oh, you got to hear me today. Give your time, your talent, and your treasure. That's what God wants from you. He, he wants it all. And when you give all to him, oh, then you have to sing that song. My grandmother never liked this song, but I love this song. You can't be God's giving. 
No matter how you try, the more you give, the more he gives back to you. You can't beat God's giving. So, so now, I, I had to bring all of that out in the introduction because I, I, don't, I, I don't want people to get to the point where they think all that the preacher wants is your money. I don't need your money. I got, I got a job. As a matter of fact, my wife got a job. <laughs> I'd be like that. That uh, uh, everybody hate Chris. The wife she used to say, "Shoot, I don't need no job. My husband got two jobs." Yeah, 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 yeah. No, see, I don't have to say that. I, I, I don't need your money, cause my God shall supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. And when you get that in your head. I'm talking to some pastors right now. You don't have to be trying to pimp no people. Uh-oh, I went there. Yes, I did. It makes no sense that we got pastors going around pimping people. But what makes it most stupid is not that the pastors are doing that, but the congregation want to be pimped. Uh-oh, yes, the preacher did say that. And I'm saying it in a nice way. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Let's go down to the Exodus. And I want to go back to Exodus 30, 35. And then I want I want to read, I want to read verse 5 because this is the inspiration. And then I'm going to start at verse 4. Listen to this. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering. For the Lord, everyone who is willing to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze. I'm going on now. I'm at verse 6. He says, purple, blue, scarlet, yarn, fine linen, goat hairs, seven, uh, I mean, ram skins, dyed red, and, and, and another type of doable leather, Arcadia, all olive oil for the lights as well. He, he, he's saying, and he goes on, he lists all of these things, and all he's saying is, are you willing? I, I want to inspire you to give. I want to inspire you to give because the Lord has commanded it. I want to inspire you to give because the Lord is asking for it. Like I said earlier, the Lord could miraculously provide all these things. All he got to do is speak a word, but he wants to inspire us to be willing givers. And that gets us to our next point in verse 20 of Exodus chapter 35. Uh, he, he says to us in, in verse 20, the whole congregation of Israel uh, 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 withdrew from Moses' presence. And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meetings, for all its service, and for all its sacred garments. Oh, hallelujah. They were inspired. They said, okay, Moses, we gone. We're getting up out of here. We're leaving your presence. But but God then moved on our hearts. And, and, and since he's moved on our hearts, we, we'll be back. We'll be back. Uh, we'll be back. Yeah, 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 because they went back to their tents, and they went back, and they brought back everything that was needed. Why did they do it? First, they were inspired, but verse 22 says, all who were willing, nobody forced them. They were willing, willing spirits, willing mindset, willing hearts. They were willing to give. And the question I have to raise is, are you a willing giver? Has God inspired you to give? Now, now, now notice, now notice, now notice, this giving was to do what? To build the tabernacle. And, 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 and the God's reason for building the tabernacle was to move the people from a multi-God mentality to worshiping the one and true God and giving them 
a place of worship. See, see, today, 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 I, I, I want to inspire you to give, to create a place of worship for God. I, 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 we got too many people going around building buildings for their own legacy, for their own trophies, to say, I got a big church. No, it ain't about a building. It's about the people in the building and their hearts. Are they willing? They got willing hearts. Can I go a little deeper? I got to go deeper. I don't want no money if you ain't got a willing heart. We'll get to that more later, but, but I want you to understand something. We in the New Testament are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God dwells in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit that lives in you and I are always ready to move in our hearts. The Spirit of God is always ready to move. To give, to help, and to bless. Because that's what God does. So, so this, ain't, this ain't about your bank account. This is not about your portfolio. This is not about the job you have or the job you don't have. It's not about your business. It's about your heart. You need and I need to be a willing. The text goes on and says that that all the people, they that the that they were willing, the men and the women alike, and they brought gold and jewelry and all kind of brooches and earrings and and rings and ornaments, and they presented their gold as a wave offering. See, 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 this wave offering goes beyond what we're talking about when we start talking about give your your tithes and offerings. These are, this is this is a, a an offering that that, that you just want to give God praise for because you want to wave your hands and pray. Now, now some folks try to misuse this and they try to manipulate people, and but I ain't trying to do that. I'm just telling you what the word says. And if your heart ain't, ain't into it, don't do it. But don't get mad. When you see other people who hard are there and willing to give, just to praise God, a wave offering to the Lord. And it says everyone who had blue and purple and, and scarlet yarns of fine linen, goat hairs and, and, and rams and skin dyed and all of that, that stuff and all that doable leather, they, 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 they brought it. And those who had Arcadia wood, that's a good wood. Arcadia would, they brought that. And then those that, 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 that did not have those things to give, but they had skill, they had a talent. And so every skilled woman spawned with her hands and brought what she had spun purple, blue, and Scarlet yarns of or and fine linen. All of that, the women were willing and had the skill spawn the goats had. Can I bring this today? It's it's some women. Y'all know y'all got some skills with some hats. Y'all can weave some weaves in folks' heads. Why ain't you doing that for the Lord? Why aren't you looking at that sister instead of looking at her and going, mm, she needs to get her hair done. Oh, we looking all wet. Why don't you pull her over and say, girl, why don't you come over to the house? And I, I want to do something for you. What do you want to do for me, Miss So and so? Girl, I don't I don't want you to get mad at me. But girl, I got some skills. You see these crooked my weed. You don't even see my lines. 
girl, come on over to the house. I'll hook you up. So instead of talking about folks, when you got skills like that, you ought to use your talent to glorify God. Oh, I'm talking about somebody right now. <laughs> I got skills in computers and, and people call me and I tell them how to, how to do things on the computer and stuff like that. I don't charge them no money. I'm doing it all to the glory of God. I, I wish that everybody was on the internet. I wish that everybody was putting a broadcast on Facebook and YouTube that the word of God might spread through this internet instead of all this other mess that spread. I'm going on in my lesson. <laughs> and then it says not only did they do that, the women, they used their skills and their talents to bless. It says the leaders. They brought honest stones and other gems to be mounted on the Ephraim and, and breastplate. Ephod and breastplate. Look here. here. I'm just going to be straight with you. If you're a pastor, if you're a deacon, trustee, associate minister, if you one of the heads of a community, I mean, uh, uh, of a committee, and you're not a giver, you need to relinquish your position or get a heart change. Because the leaders will be the first one that God blesses. And then you ought to bless God back. It burns my britches to hear a leader talking about, I don't, I don't know about all this tide and stuff. It burns my britches. They come into a little money. When they ain't had no money, they was right there in line. Oh, oh, pastor, I need this, I need that. But but when they got their money, they ain't gave a dime to the church. And they want to be leader, want to have keys to the church. Man, you better get on out of here. I'm sorry. I'm just talking about getting. <laughs> but they also, it says, the leaders, they also brought spices and olive oil for the lights and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant oil. They bought the good stuff. They, they, they wasn't cheap. They, they didn't go to Walmart and get the cheapest olive oil. No, they got the best olive oil. They got the best spices because they knew that this olive oil and these spices were going to be used as anointing oil and fragrances of incense. And I told you last week up in heaven, the, the, the 24 elders and, and, and the angels are walking around with bowls of incense, solid gold bowls of incense. And, and those incense represents the prayers of, of the people going up to God, that they might be a smelling incense. God, smell it and answer our prayer. And then it says, all the Israelite men and women were willing, who were willing, brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded. Free will, free will. We have free will. And we can choose to do or not to do anything we want. But I wanna tell you, you cannot choose the consequences. The consequences is out of your hand. Whatever decision you make, there's gonna be consequences. Well, in this lesson, when you Choose to be a free will offerer, a free will giver. That choice has a consequence that is written in stone. And that's what we're going to get to our last part of this lesson. Y'all got to wait a minute. Just wait. I'm going to tell you. So now we're going to go to... Second Corinthians chapter nine, verses six through eight. 
We talked about inspired giving and willing giving. Now we're going to talk about cheerful giving. Listen to this verse. And I'm going to read it from the New International Version. I'm going to come back and read it from the Message Bible. Remember this. Here's the concrete stuff I told you. You, you become a willing giver. Here is the concrete choice. Here's, here's the concrete consequence of your choice. Let me say that again. Here's the concrete consequence of your choice. Listen to it. Whoever so sparingly, that's your choice. That's your decision. Will also reap sparing. There it is. If you choose not to give, you ain't gonna get nothing in return. I know this 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 sowing and reaping, that 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 is a that is a farming term, but but if you plant a seed, if you sow a seed, that's what sowing means. If you plant a seed in the ground, you know that that seed is gonna grow. And if you sow sparingly, all you're gonna get back is a sparing farm. But listen to the last part of verse 6. First, second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. There it is. Whoops. There it is. If you give generously, God will also give you back a harvest and it'll be a generous harvest. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. And listen to the rest of the text. Each of you to give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly, not under compulsion, for God loves. Oh, hallelujah. A tearful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Oh, the Lord. Let me listen talk to it from the message Bible. Listen to the text. He said, remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over. Make up your own mind what you will give. That 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 will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights and the giver delights in giving. God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're you that you are ready for anything and everything and more than just ready to go or ready to do what needs to be done as the psalmist puts it he throws caution to the wind gives to the needy in reckless abandonment he 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 his right living right giving ways never run out and never wear out. The most generous God who gives seed to the former. I got to keep reading this. That becomes bread for your meal is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full form lies, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise, God. As I end this lesson today, I think about when I became a tither and a giver. And I watched the Lord bless our family 
in so many different ways. We get jobs when everybody else don't have a job. It's days when in the past where I said, Lord, I, I, I'm tired. I don't feel like working no more. And he let me come home. And he still provided for all of our needs. There were times when, when the wife got laid off and we weren't prepared for it, but we already was givers. And, and we would go to the mailbox and people would be in dropped off gifts to us. This is before I became a preacher. But as a pastor and a preacher, I haven't wanted for nothing. Because I'm going back to that song. You can't be God's given. No matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives back to you. So before I go to my points to ponder to close out the lesson, I'm I'm gonna be real transparent with you. This ministry, this God in the midst ministry, the church that God has put me over, New Harvest, E Church, we, we don't ask for money. We don't bother you and, and pander to you with a sob story. But if you give to this ministry, God is going to bless you. Because what we end up doing, we, we get better equipment in order to broadcast. We, 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 we not only do that, but, but it, it allows us to travel to various places and meet the members of New Harvest Church or the members of God in the Midst Ministry all over the world. I have a dream to go to Africa. I want to be with, with the New Harvest Church in Kenya, where there's an orphanage. And I do my best every month to send them some money. We're averaging about $500 a month that we're sending over there to Kenya for that orphanage. I tell you, God, God knows. When we give like that, that he's going to give back to us, press down, shake together, and run it over. Pastor Mom's church, East St. Louis Christian Center, they have some giving people. All of them are retired. I'm just saying, the more you give, the more he gives back to you. Here's my thoughts, thought points to ponder to end this lesson. To have a heart that is willing is where true giving begins. Number two, God consistently calls us to give from a generous heart. Number three, the person who gives little often receives little. Number four, we must be mindful of our motives for giving. We got to know what, why we're doing it. Not grudgingly. Not because you trying to buy God out of necessity. But God loves a cheerful giver. And finally, number five. God loves when we share what we already own, what, what he already owns anyway. He then turns around and blesses us too. What a God we serve. In conclusion, the challenge, the challenge that we have in this lesson, the challenge of Moses and the Israelite and, and Paul and the Corinthians were different. Their challenges were different and they had different reasons for asking people to give. The Israelites were challenged to give to construct a place of worship by which they, the givers, would benefit. The end result could be seen and touched and, fit and have a physical reminder of God's presence. But the contrast 
Paul challenged the Corinthians to give, to meet the needs of people they have never seen and might never see. Although they anticipated the outcome of the two giving plans were different, they shared a common factor. Willingness actually on the part of the Israelite, anticipation on the parts of the Corinthians. When we find ourselves faced with the important and valid opportunity to give to meet a need, we should explain our attitude before, or examine, excuse, our attitude before we examine our bank account. I got to say that one again. When we find ourselves faced with an important and valid opportunity to give, to meet a need, we should examine our attitudes before we examine our bank account. A good place to start testing for proper giving attitude is to recall the ultimate example of having a willingness to give. That's Jesus. Though he was rich, yet for your sake and my sake, he became poor. That yet through his poverty, we might be rich. Glory to his name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. Sometimes it's hard to let go of what we have in order to help us. Sometimes we don't even think we have enough to give, to take care of ourselves. But teach us, Lord, to trust you enough to give cheerfully. Help us, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name, who gave his all for us. Amen and amen. The thought to remember a proper attitude about giving trumps the signs of your gift. Before we close this recording, we always like to pray the prayer of salvation. Please pray this prayer with me, and I believe because of what the word says, you will be saved. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come confessing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that he died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will. Thank you for this, for giving your life that I might receive eternal life. And that I might live a life that shows I'm a willing giver and ready to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Facebook, we'll see you next Sunday. Have a blessed day and always remember to be a blessing and it's more blessed to give <laughs> than to receive.